right now at noon. What comes next now that Carthage voters removed a city council member from office? Well, we've got a fairly cool afternoon. It's been a bit breezy here and there. We've got sunshine to go along with all that as well. Look at your forecast and some upcoming rain chances coming up. Plus, Planned Parenthood plans to sue the state of Missouri for full abortion access. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, the Carthage City Council now has another vacancy to fill in the wake of Tuesday's public vote to recall council member Tiffany Cossey. This is KOM News at noon. I'm Elise Snowy. Now, the vote came after a petition to remove her gained enough votes this past summer, which led to the question being added to the November 5th ballot. KOM's Melissa Alexis spoke to some community members for their reaction. Anytime you're elected to any position, I think conduct's very important. Tiffany Cossey will no longer be a member of the Carthage City Council as of November 5th. Dolores Glendening is a resident who says she hopes Cossie's removal brings peace to the Carthage community. Let's always hope they do what the citizens want, and yes, I do want peace. Things should be done, uh, you know, at the pleasure of the voter and the people, you know. Jerry Neal, another community member, believes this will resolve some of the tension in the Carthage City Council and lead to a less tumultuous dynamic. Turmoil is never good. It's, you know, try to get along with everyone as much as possible. It's not easy to do, but, you know, I just hope that uh, that will all reach fruition and everybody will be back uh, enjoying each other again. Cossie was recalled with 730 people voting yes to the recall and only 457 people voting no. A crowd at the courthouse cheered Tuesday night as Jasper County Clerk Charlie Davis announced Cossey will be recalled, with 61.4% of voters in support of the decision. Glendening is optimistic the person who replaces Councilmember Cossey will be less controversial, and she believes more can be accomplished through a more harmonious city council. That's what we need to do is pick somebody that uh, knows about the community and that's lived here a while and knows what's going on better than I do. <laughs> but so that we can all get along, because you can accomplish a lot more. Reporting in Carthage, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. The Carthage City Council members say they will move forward to fill her position along with the other vacant seats in the City Council. We've reached out to Cossie for comment, but have not yet received a response. Now let's check in with Chris Warner for a look at the forecast. Yeah, we're doing pretty good for this Thursday afternoon. It's a bit on the cool side out there still. Not much more warming to do, even though we've got plentiful sunshine. Looks great there. Modoc camera 20th and range line in Joplin. And same from our camera in downtown Pittsburgh at 4th and Broadway. Looking back to the southeast, we've got clear skies. And mostly clear to partly cloudy is exactly what we expected, and that's what we're getting. Yesterday, an extraordinary normal day. We were only what three degrees above normal for the high at 65. We started right where we should. No records, anything like that. And take a look too at our uh, rainfall for the month of November so far. Doing good out there. More on the way. 58 in Joplin right now. 55 in Pittsburgh and around the region. We've got 61 in Chanute. We've got some other 60s down to our south, but the majority of us holding out in the mid to upper 50s. We'll eventually make low 60s for some, upper 50s for others. The clouds will increase as we head into the evening hours, slowly but surely. And it'll, of course, be a little chilly. Back Back down to the upper 40s by 11. More clouds tonight. Rain chances increasing tomorrow. We'll go over that plus the weekend forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, the Sooner State claims historic voter turnout this year. In a statement from the Oklahoma Secretary of State Election Board, the unofficial numbers show more Oklahomans cast their vote for president than in any previous election. And person early voting in this state set a new record with more than 120,000. The state also claimed the largest number of registered voters in the state heading into this election since tracking began in 2000. A Planned Parenthood says it plans to sue the state of Missouri for full abortion access. Missouri voters passed Amendment 3 Tuesday night, which provides a state constitutional right to reproductive freedom. However, there are still legal limits to abortions in the state. 
Planned Parenthood's lawsuit claims the restrictions around abortions that still exist, including requirements put upon health care providers of abortions, are unconstitutional. Health care providers are seeking to block a number of state laws that are now in conflict with the Missouri Constitution. Amendment 3 goes into effect in early December. Well, the city of Pittsburgh will hold its annual State of the City address this coming Tuesday at Memorial Auditorium. Members of the Pittsburgh Commu Com City Commission rather will be there. The public is invited to attend this free event, although a limited number of tickets are available through Memorial Auditorium. Last night, donors and friends gathered at the Pittsburgh Memorial Auditorium as the Community Foundation of Southeast Kansas celebrated its grant recipients for the past year. Now, the grants fund projects in a wide range of charitable causes like children and youth activities, housing assistance, women's health and others. We give grants for anything from uh, child care to tennis shoes to uh, playground equipment, anything in between. Um, you know, there's so many needs of our Southeast Kansas group of people and uh, we have the money and we love being able to give it out. You can learn more about grants available online on the Community Foundation of Southeast Kansas website. Well, over a hundred museum professionals from around Kansas are in Fort Scott for a three day gathering. The Gordon Parks Museum is hosting the 2024 Kansas Museums Association Conference, but activities are spilling over to other Fort Scott venues, including the Fort Scott National Historic Site, the Lowell Milken Center and the Ellis Fine Arts Center. Conference attendees are touring various attractions and attending workshops on a wide range of topics and the latest trends in museums and preservation. History, no matter what is happening in our world, that history is important to save, it's important to share, and it is important to understand because history tells us a lot about the present. Um, it tells us a lot about the mistakes we've made in the past, and hopefully it will guide us to make better decisions in the future. For 55 years, the KMA Annual Conference has served as a focal point for its member institutions that range across the Sunflower State. Well, coming up, technology could bring beneficial changes to the Missouri DMV. And later, we're making pepperoni pie squares in the Mr. Foo Test Kitchen. Well, today is the last day to check out the Pittsburgh State's Art Majors Exhibition. From now until 4.30 p.m., the students' art is on display at Pitt State's University Gallery in Porter Hall. Now, next week, there will be a fiber arts exhibit of student work that will be going up available for folks to see. It will be located in the second floor gallery. Well, dozens of businesses and colleges showed up at the McDonald County High School yesterday for a career fair. The event offered students career insights into such fields as retail and manufacturing to health care and government, just to name a few. The goal was to give students an opportunity to network with local business leaders and to provide a look at some possible future career opportunities. I actually really like this, not only because of the freebies that I get every year, but I get sort of new intel on each field and it sort of sparks new interest for me. Now students were able to use a fun bingo style card to collect career information, making the event both educational and interactive. Well, if you need to get a new driver's license in Missouri, you'll have to wait until next week. The Missouri Department of Revenue is rolling out a new driver license system across the state. Now they are installing new equipment and it'll eventually allow you to renew your license online. But to get those systems in place, they have to pause driver license services. Now some license offices will be open today for motor vehicle services only, but expect all offices to be closed on Friday and Monday for for Veterans Day. So they expect the new systems to be up and running by Tuesday. Authorities are investigating an early 
morning house fire in Jasper County. The call came in just before 345 yesterday morning in the 500 block of County Lane 263. A home was engulfed when they arrived and authorities say the fire began in the living room or the kitchen area. A woman who lived there was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Authorities say they've arrested two suspects in connection with a series of thefts in Carl Junction, Missouri. The CJ Police Department teamed up with the Newton County Sheriff's Office to make the arrests. They say two people were found in possession of stolen property in Newton County as part of an ongoing investigation. The arrests follow at least five reported thefts from vehicles in Carl Junction committed in the early hours of October 18th. Well, still to come on KOM News at noon, Mr. Food. If every day around four o'clock you find yourself asking, what should I make for dinner? You're going to love what we're making today. And we're tracking showers and thunderstorms as we head into our Friday across the area. The latest on that when we come back. Welcome back to the KOM News at Noon. So it's a bit of a cool day out there, but it is a very fall-like day out there as well. Also dealing with some occasional gusty winds. Let's start with a quick look outside our camera downtown Pittsburgh. Looking great so far. Clear skies, plentiful sunshine, but not plentiful warmth. But again, it's seasonable outside, and that's the most important part of this whole thing. Heading through the rest of the afternoon, again, mostly clear to partly cloudy skies are the expectation for us as we go through the day. And as we head into the evening hours, those clouds are going to begin to thicken up on us and uh, it's going to go mostly cloudy overnight. Now as we head into tomorrow morning, a couple isolated showers or maybe even a rumble of thunder. I think again the best chances for any measurable or meaningful rainfall early tomorrow morning is going to be for Donia, Chanute, Burlington, Yates Center, uh, Howard, Sedan. Uh, those are going to be the zones that will get the better opportunities for maybe some rain, but a stray sprinkle or two will be possible outside of that. Now once we head a little later into the morning, here we are about nine, we start seeing showers and thunderstorms and all most of those same areas out to the west here. So Yates Center, Fredonia, Coffeeville, Bartlesville, and maybe even some heavier rain trying to work into the Parsons area. This is all associated with a boundary out to our west that's going to be bringing shower and thunderstorm chances. So on radar, showers and thunderstorms will be moving from south to north, but the boundary itself is going to be getting pushed off to the east. So the further we go into our Friday, the gradually the further east the storms go. So a little more organized activity out there now by about the noon hour. Uh, Chanute, Parsons, and points west. And as we go to about 2.30, 3 o'clock on Friday, we've got a line of storms. And even though it looks a little bit spooky at this point, not anticipating any severe weather of any kind, but heavy rainfall possibilities to so watch out for flash flooding or areas that you know are prone to flooding because we got some locations out here got nearly a foot of rain in a three day period. So by about three, we're lining this up on the 69 corridor almost in points west. And as we had a little further into our Friday by six, now we're a little more scattered with showers and storms around the area. Not, not as organized, but it doesn't take long for additional development to begin taking place out in our western counties again. So Yates Center, Chanute, Fredonia, Coffeeville, and these Scattered storms will continue. This is one o'clock Saturday morning. They will continue through the overnight hours. And again, still no severe weather expected by five. Still have a few lingering showers, maybe a rumble of thunder. And then by noon Saturday, the boundary itself now just to the east of our area. And we have southwest winds, clear skies and warmer temperatures for us on our Friday. Speaking of temperatures sitting at 58 in Joplin right now, clear skies as you can see northeast breeze at nine over to Pittsburgh again, clear skies a little cooler 55 with that northeast wind at about 12 and around the region not looking too shabby with temperatures. We've got some 60s out there. Chanute Sedan into Kansas at 61. Then we've got some low 60s in our southern counties, but the bulk of the region hanging out in the mid to upper 50s. Some this is where you're going to cap out is about the upper 50s. Others we should make about the low 60s, so pretty close to average. Northeast winds gusting upwards of 20 at times. Those gusty winds will continue into the overnight and will go mostly cloudy and fall back into the 40s once again. And as we get later into the day tomorrow, we're going to have those scattered showers and thunderstorms still breezy. Now east winds gusting to 25 mid 60s tomorrow and Saturday, and that continues into Sunday. And as we head into next week, at least the beginning, temperatures going a bit above normal. Another cold front next Wednesday brings us some additional shower and thunderstorm chances and much cooler temperatures, at least briefly on the backside of that cold front next week. All right. Thanks, Chris. We'll stick around. We're making pepperoni pie squares in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. We'll be right back.
Howard is sharing a quick and easy recipe for pepperoni pie squares in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. If every day around 4 o'clock you find yourself asking, what should I make for dinner? Then you're going to love what we're making today. It's a cross between an ooey gooey casserole and the best pepperoni pizza you ever had. And since it's on the table from start to finish in about 30 minutes, all the better. We start out by mixing some flour with a good amount of milk and a couple of eggs. After that's well mixed, we stir in lots of monster cheese that we've cubed up, a package of sliced pepperoni, and a bit of Italian seasoning. This goes into a casserole dish, and into the oven it goes for 25 minutes or so. And like all of our recipes, feel free to change them up a bit. Maybe swap out the pepperoni for crumbled cooked sausage, or add some crushed red pepper to give it a little extra kick. While that bakes, maybe open up a bottle of wine, throw together a salad, and dinner is done. Don't expect too much dinner conversation once you start serving it, cause all you're gonna hear are lots of oohs and ahs, followed by, can I have some more? To solve your what to make for dinner dilemma, go online and get the recipe for our pepperoni pie squares. And if you add this to your weekly dinner routine, you can't miss. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a clever way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. We can find this recipe along with a lot more good food from the Mr. Food Test Kitchen online. Just go to our website, that's kaliumnewsnow.com. Now here's a look at the four state market prices. All right, so we're still going to be partly cloudy, breezy, clouds increasing, showers and storms increasing later in the day on Friday. So late morning through the afternoon, overnight, evening, however you want to phrase it, all the way into the first half of our Saturday. No severe weather, then we clear out, warm up. Cold front Wednesday brings us more storms and much cooler weather on the backside. All right, thanks, Chris. And Dow, with you first later on. Well, a lot's coming up at five. For starters, a groundbreaking treatment for type 1 diabetes is showing promising results. We're going to take a look at the minimally invasive procedure, which could lead to diabetics not having to inject themselves with insulin. Plus, as the weather gets cooler, outdoor pests are going to be looking for a warm place this winter. We have a few tips to keep them out of your home. And a flight paramedic from Chinook, Kansas, will be honored at the American Ambulance Association in Washington, D.C. Hope you'll join us for those stories. A lot more, of course, it's coming up today. KOAM News at 5. Absolutely. Lots to look forward to tonight. Thanks, Dow. And that's the news for now. Thank you for joining us on KOAM News at noon. We'll, of course, see you right back here at 5. Until then, have a great rest of your day.